Welcome to CDS, Custom Downstream System. My name is Jerry Lamort and I'm the Service Manager here at CDS. Today we will be talking about the CSSD 3-3, which stands for the CDS Super Precision Down Cut Saw 3 inch by 3 inch cut window. We will be going over the operational of the machine. Once your machine is off the skid and onto the floor, you will be able to easily move the machine around. The machine is on four casters. Two of them are swivel casters and two of them are fixed casters. We recommend to be two or three people to be able to move the machine around. The machine of this size is not too heavy and you can easily move it around. As you may see, I can move it as I need even by being alone. Although to move it in the shop and put it into position with your line, it is better to be multiple people. To level the machine, you will need a few tools. A short level, and a longer level. Also, you will need a wrench for the jack screws. By placing the levels on the skirt of the machine, we will make sure that the machine is leveled. Always level two jack screws at a time. We'll begin by making sure that the machine is perfectly leveled in one direction and then in the other direction. When you level your jack screws, always do a quarter of a turn and do two jack screws at a time. Once your machine is leveled, then we can lock in the jack screws. When it comes to a servo saw, there are three main connections that need to be done. Your electrical connection, your encoder connection for your signal, your speed signal, and also your pneumatic connection. They're all located more or less in the same area, and we'll do them right now. The first thing to do is connect the pneumatic and the encoder. We will start by connecting the encoder onto the encoder signal. So with the encoder cable, we'll just put it in and it's a quick connect. And we're just going to screw it until it's properly tightened. The tilt table is optional if in case you have a tilt table and then you'll be able to connect your tilt table in this position. Then we will connect the pneumatic And finally, now we will connect the electrical. Once your local electrician has done all the electrical connections, we will be able to connect the machine to your inlet. At CDS, we use a lot of these twist-ons in inlets in which you just have to plug it in. This is recommended to be done by a trained professional or your trained electrician. The air control on a servo saw is pretty simple. You only have two controls. You have your saw blade up, that you may go make it go faster or slower, or you have your saw blade down, that you may have it go faster or slower. The air indicator is only to tell you if you have air attached to the machine. If the green bubble is not out, it indicates that your machine has no air. To adjust your controls, you undo your locking nut and then you adjust either by making the cylinder go faster or by screwing it to go slower and these are the adjustments on a CDS servo saw you will have a touchscreen control package we will go over some of the features on the touchscreen although on this particular model there is a custom feature that we will not talk about all CDS Servo saws can be custom made to your operation. What is the most common component on a, a servo is that you will have the ability to change your cut length. Right now we're at 25 inches a minute. In order to change it to 20 inches a minute, you will click on it and then we will enter the desired length and press the enter button and that will change your cut length. If you want to reset the counter, we're going to press on the counter and then we're going to choose if we want to reset it or not. Some of the feature buttons that you will have on all of our saws is also the system on, the saw on off, and the light on off to have light inside of the saw co uh, compartment in an enclosed saw or down cut saw like this one. Some of the other buttons are the counter, to have it on or off, the system on, 
and then the saw on or off to activate your saw. These buttons will be needed when you start the machine and we will do a start sequence later. The tilt table settings, when we click on the button, will bring you to another menu. If you have a tilt table connected to the machine, you will be able to adjust the delay of when we're going to engage the tilt table and also how long the tilt duration. And you have another button to activate or deactivate the tilt table function. Under the tilt table settings, you have the start, the indication of the machine is in start, and the stop button. These are necessary for your automatic functionality. Then right up beside it, you have the home button and the homing light whenever your machine is in homing uh, procedure. The manual cut button right under is the button in order to do any manual cuts at any given time during or in between two cycles. Then you have the light on off button and you have the alarm indication. When we go in the alarms, we're going to press on it, it brings you to the alarm screens. Currently we have no alarm but if ever there would be one, you would need to acknowledge the alarm in order to clear it and also do a fault reset. Now let's start the machine. First thing that we will do is do a system on and then we will activate the saw. As you may hear, at this point the saw is running. Then we will hit the home button to bring the machine home. Once the machine is in the home position, the home button will disappear and we'll be able to start the machine. At this point, the machine is running automatically. To stop the machine, we will press the stop button, we will stop the saw, and we will stop the system. And now your machine is stopped. Right under the touchscreen, you have three buttons. You have the reset button, to clear any fault, another uh, light station switch, and the emergency stop button. One adjustment that we have on the down cut servo saw is the adjustment of these guides. In order to adjust them, we will unscrew this handle here, and we will be able to adjust the, the guide as we need. Once the guide is adjusted, you have one in the front, one in the back, and on both sides of the blade, lock the handle in position and then your guide will be set. The other adjustment that you have on a down cut servo saw is the adjustment of the blade height limit switch. Depending on your product you can adjust it either to go cut higher or to cut lower. Adjusting the switch or the, in this case the sensor is by undoing this, this uh, holding uh, bracket and you can bring it up or down. Once you've adjusted, make sure that this is properly tightened because you don't want it to get loose while in operation. The CDS servo down cut saw has several safety features. You will have an e-stop located at the main operator panel and a door safety switch. Whenever the door is activated or open or whenever you activate the e-stop, you will go in fault. In order to remove your fault, you will need to press the reset button on the, the main uh, operator panel and then your fault will be cleared. You can operate normally whenever you need. If you activate an e-stop, your machine will go into e-stop e mode but you will not be able to reset it until you pull back your e-stop. Pulling back your e-stop, then you're able to reset the fault. At this point, your machine is ready to start again. To power down your machine, we will press the stop button if your machine is in doing a cycle or in automatic mode. Once the machine stops, we will be able to hit system off. Then we can go in the back of the machine and power down with the main disconnect switch. You can use your tag out and lockout procedure if you desire to do any maintenance on the machine. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and comment this video. If you have any questions, you can go see our website at cdsmachine.com. You can also contact one of our local sales representatives. Once again, thank you for watching.